glad to be here nonetheless. And uh, we look forward to a lively discussion regarding how we relate with other countries and how we relate with the people of our region in the common aspiration of uh, improving the lives of our people. And uh, I am therefore not going to say much. You may have some questions. Professor Jay, um, I'm going to de deviate slightly from the foreign policy theme and ask you a domestic question instead. I think this is the fourth time that you've now challenged the incumbents. And every time you complain that the playing field is not level, that effectively there are institutions and the system is against challenges. And sometimes you can't even get out onto the streets or have a rally. I know the walk to work process, for example, which was completely squashed by the government. Is it not a bit pointless to keep on challenging the incumbents in that kind of context? Is it not a waste of resources, perhaps, to collude in a facade of democracy when, in fact, what we have here is a pseudo dictatorship? Well, what we have is not just a pseudo dictatorship, it's really an outright dictatorship. But uh, the struggle to uh, get a democratic dispensation involves using every opportunity that uh, avails itself to connect with the people, to pass a message onto the people, to empower people with information, and to gather to push the frontiers of freedom in the country. And that's what we've been doing at every election. And as you may indeed uh, know, it's, uh, it has not been all in vain. We've made some uh, changes in the structures of, uh, of the political and, demo and, demo and, de and democratic processes, and that struggle is simply must continue until uh, we have a, a, a democratic dispensation. Dr. Uh, just a, moving back to foreign policy, if you were elected, would you pull troops, Ugandan troops, out of Somalia? And secondly, would you have approached the mediation in Burundi differently compared to <laughs> President Museveni? Our overriding consideration obviously would be maintaining stability and peace of the region and uh, we would therefore uh, not only engage with the, the Somalia situation as Uganda but as a region uh, where we have regional peace uh, uh, arrangements and if uh, there is uh, a demand that our troops be there for that purpose, we would definitely gladly do so, have them there. But if uh, indeed uh, there are uh, reasons why our troops being there would not serve the common uh, good for peace and stability of, the, of that area and the region, then we would think otherwise. And, uh, and on Burundi? Burundi. Uh, what, what was the question about? Would you have approached the mediation that uh, President Museveni has undertaken? Would you have approached that differently? Yes. Well, I think that uh, uh, mediation requires credibility on both sides of those that are being mediated. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so apart from the approach of mediation, there is the question of the acceptability of the mediators. And I think that has been, uh, frankly, a bit of a problem in Burundi. So President Museveni is not an acceptable mediator, is that what you're saying? I think we could have, Burundi could have had a better mediator. Yes. yes. My name is Raymond Ndu. I work with you. Dr. Mateo, what do you have to say about the level of accountability the government has given to the foreign government That includes the number of soldiers that have died, the amount of money that has well, the level of accountability is uh, obviously far less than in other areas where there is a general problem of accountability for actions of government to the citizens. And in the area of security and uh, the military, there is uh, now some kind of uh, a, a blanket cover that it's done in the interest of, uh, of security, which obviously it's not. I think the people of Uganda are entitled to know what um, uh, our challenges are in those areas, and uh, especially where 
our resources, human and uh, other resources, uh, put at the disposal of those uh, uh, engagements, the people definitely have a right to know and they are not being told anything. Yes, we'll take the last one. Um, so when I tell of power FM, uh, you're always going to the new place, the topic idea, you want to have to say something, just not that you have. I want to talk about the relations Uganda has had. Why is it that Uganda doesn't have a clear foreign policy? Yes, we, we see Uganda all over the place. Why do we have a clear policy? Well, the government will have a clear policy. Well, I think uh, that question would best be answered by those who have failed to develop the policy. <laughs> But um, I consider that the obstacle to developing a clear policy has been in the, as a result of interests of advancement of power, of power, power politics, uh, projecting power into the region rather than cooperating with the region to deal not only with the regional issues, but to use the region to solve domestic issues that affect us, you know, the joblessness of our people. The, uh, the, 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 the trade, the, the investment that we need in this country, that uh, has been has suffered at the expense of uh, projection of power in the region, seeking to be uh, a dominant force and uh, and uh, decide on issues that uh, that relate to the region. I think that has been a problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.